Howdy, y'all. Just got back from spending a day at town and have a little shopping haul to share. So the main thing is this big guy. This is a studio easel. And we're going to be putting that together a little later. So that's for Slim to practice his Bob Ross. And also, we got a big pack of canvases. And what else? Okay, so we got a faucet for the bathroom because it's been leaking and Howard won't quit playing in it and he is getting water everywhere. So not just the slow leak that's wasting water, but also because... Of course, Howard is playing and everything. Here is just a few things we got from Walmart. It's nothing really. Just some uh, soap. And just two different kinds of soap. And I got a belt. Here we go. Let's show you the belt. Because uh, my little belt that I had broke. So I needed a new one. I got this one. Has a nice little pattern on it. So yeah, I was glad to get a new belt. And let's see here. We've got, oh, this is a nifty little thing. This is a magnifier. Two different little magnifiers that magnify um, three different strengths. So that's cool. I can think of a lot of different ways we can use that in our crafty art stuff. Oh, also, I got this beautiful dragonfly pendant. I love it. And I got a little chain to go with it. Where is that little chain? Here it is. It's a pretty little chain to go with it. And Hobby Lobby had all of their metal um, what they call it? Metal craft? Metal gallery. Yes, that's what it says. All their metal gallery stuff was on 40% off. So that's cool. That that set just cost me about $7. Um, he also got some <clears throat> markers. Nice set of markers. And oh, look at this, you guys. This is a pattern for my jacket. I've got this blue jean jacket for Christmas. I love it. And I saw this and I couldn't resist. It just reminds me of Norma Jean. Oh, so I got a little patch for my jacket. Let's see. He got some white gel pens. And, oh, yeah, various brushes in the Bob Ross style. The wide Two inch and one inch brushes. Let me see. Let me get all these out here. So yeah, and this way he doesn't have to clean the brushes over and over. He can just switch to a different one and clean them all at the end of the painting session. So he got a selection of brushes, and I got some yarn. I'm excited about this yarn. I am going to be making a blanket for my friend Vern. So Vern, if you're watching, these are for you. So this is my complimentary color that I got to go. This is, uh, what brand is this? Yeah, Crafter's Secret. Um, and then, so I got, they only had four, so I got four. This is the, I love this yarn brand, and um, I'm trying to see the name of the color. Surf's Up, that's what it is. It's different colors of blue, and this beautiful golden harvest gold and cream. So yeah, I got four of those, that's all they had of this right here, and I just fell in love with this. And then I saw these and these two colors right here, the uh, kind of harvest gold color matches perfectly. So yeah, I'm really excited to get started on that. So Vern, I'm going to be starting you a blanket soon. All right. So I think that's, yeah, that's basically it for the haul. Okay. Now. 
I've made me a cup of coffee and gonna sit down and chat for just a minute. Oh, today was a busy day. <clears throat> we, um, see where I need this belt. My darn britches are getting huge. Or maybe I'm getting small. <laughs> um, I went to the eye doctor today and I got my glasses and I was worried they weren't going to have what I wanted. But luckily, as I was, she told me which frames, you know, I could select from and then there's some others that cost a little bit more and then there's the designer frames and stuff. So I was looking, I had something really specific in mind. And I was looking all at everything, and the first pair I got, I was like, oh, this is it. These are beautiful, and they're like a, a blue, and they're solid, and um, they're real lightweight. And they're not super thin, but they're thinner than the other ones that I had in that kind of that shape. Anyway, I put them on, and I was like, oh, I like these. I like the way they fit and everything. And now I kind of know what I'm looking for when before... I had no idea. I never wore glasses before, so I didn't know, you know, what to look for. And I didn't want the little nose pads because I had that on my last glasses. And I always want to put my glasses up on my head like that because I'm used to doing that with my shades. And I would do that and they would get tangled up in my hair. Plus, they kind of made a little place on my nose there, which was unattractive. When I took my green glasses off, I'd sometimes have a little place. So... I tried a couple of other kinds, you know, a couple other frames on that kind of looked pretty good. One had some real decorative stuff going on here, and uh, another one had more kind of stylish shape and stuff. But I went back to that very first pair, and I mean, I was just drawn to it and went to that very first pair and just picked them and put them on, and I went, that is it. And they were blue and I, exactly what I wanted. And then whenever I was... Uh, talking to the, uh, well, before that, when I was talking to the optometrist, I asked him, he asked me if I had bought bifocals, and I was like, no, just reading glasses, although I did get some bifocals, I didn't like them, and just used my reading glasses all the time, and he tested my eyes, and I did need stronger reading glasses, and I asked him, I was like, he said, you know, later, if your long vision is impaired, then you're going to want bifocals. And I was like, I just really don't want bifocals. I I'm just can't, can't imagine getting used to that. And uh, he was like, well, you know, some people choose to have like reading glasses and then have, you know, um, like driving glasses. So I was relieved to know that it is still going to be a choice whether or not I want bifocals because that pair of bifocals I got was like, I was constantly, I, I'm not good at it. <clears throat> so I was glad to hear that I didn't have to eventually get bifocals because I was talking to him and he said, is my vision going to steadily get worse as I age? And he was like, yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> it will. It'll steadily get worse. And so I don't really know what this means because I'm not, I don't know about glasses very much, but he said my prescription was like, 1.0 and now it's 2.5 so it's increased you know by itself again in half so I had to get quite a bit stronger glasses but I don't know you know how strong that is compared to most people who need reading glasses or whatever so I got that done and I also got the special filter on the lenses for blue I can't remember it's like prevention blue screen or something anyway it's supposed to filter like when you're looking at your phone or a computer screen or whatever and cause you to get less of the blue light that's not good for us. So, um, yeah, I got that on there even though it was very expensive. It was more than the glasses themselves to get that filter on there. And it'll be two weeks before I can pick them up. And then I will have new glasses and I'm looking forward to it because I got some books for Christmas and I want to read them and I've kind of been slow to answer comments lately because it's not been easy. I need new reading glasses, so I have to do it on my phone and like make the, the print really large and hold it away from me so I can do those, and it takes a little while, so I've been slow to answer comments. So sorry if you've noticed that I'm dragging on answering comments. It's because I can't hardly see, um, but that will be remedied soon, so I got that taken care of. Um, Another thing, breaking news. Okay, so Willow went missing. 
he did not eat, well, he did not come out and eat either time that I fed him yesterday or this morning. I did put the food out and it was gone, uh, but out here, you know, anything could have eaten it. I didn't know for sure that he had come up and eaten. So he was missing for a day and a half. And Slim had told me he'd seen another cat around. And it was calico. And, you know, calicos are normally female. If you see a calico, it's probably a female. Male calicos are pretty rare. Um, so there's a calico around. And um, Willow has been serenading around the house late at night. And it, he has a terrible, terrible voice. It reminds me of on Tom and Jerry when Tom used to get on the back fence and be like, Meow! <laughs> So he's been doing that around the house for the last uh, week or so. And so when we came home after our shopping trip and trip to the eye doctor and everything, um, on the porch was sitting Willow and a little calico female. So Willow has a girlfriend, which means since neither one of them are fixed, we're going to have kittens. So I'm hoping to maybe get one or the other of them fixed really soon. Hopefully the female before anything can happen, which I mean, if she's here hanging out with him, we're gonna have kittens. And I don't mean kittens under the house. So that's like a much more pressing need now is to um, control the cat population outside. But she's a cutie, little calico. I've kind of halfway named her calico. And, you know, I'm feeding them twice a day, so they're not going anywhere. Um, and, you know, when, when we pulled up, me and Slim were both like, oh, we know what this means, you know. But we can't just, like, not feed them and stuff because we're cat people and we love cats and they're adorable and we can't help it. So we're going to very much try to nip this in the bud and just have the girlfriend and maybe not a whole extended generational family. Oh, they breed like rabbits. So there's that. <laughs> I'm really excited to get this easel put together. We're going to redo the paint room a little bit and shift the focus a little bit more from the pour painting to more of the oil painting so he can, because we moved a TV and a DVD player in there and that took up quite a bit of room so that he can watch the videos, the how-to videos, and do the Bob Ross painting. And so stuff is going to have to shift around to fit this in there. And we considered, you know, like putting this up in here. There's plenty of room. And we have a great big smart TV in there. And so it would be easier to see, you know, than in the small old school TV. We just have like, it's an old fat back TV that I've had for years and years. It's our extra TV. So... The picture is not sharp, you know, and it's not very big. It's just your standard size TV. And so he could see better in here, but we would have to lock the cats up for however long he wanted to paint. And then we would have to move everything back into the paint room anyway, because we couldn't leave a wet oil painting out here on white carpet with five cats. That's, <laughs> that's not going to be done. So... We have to shift some things around in the paint room and we got to make room for the easel with a good view of the television. We might have to move that and we'll just see how it works out. I kind of want to keep the long table in there, but then again, I might move that and get a smaller table and put in there because I don't actually need all of that space to do pour paintings. I just need enough, you know, just like a area, work area. Um, uh, because it doesn't take a lot of space to do it. And I have a, uh, all the rest of the space is just like storage and for wet paintings. So we're going to be uh, redoing that room. And I'm so looking forward to this. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I want to make a nice big blanket for my friend. I'm probably going to include white in this as well. These are going to be my starting colors, but... I'll probably use some white to accent the different uh, bands of color because every blanket I make is like a giant granny square. You know, it's just squares inside of frames of squares. And usually I will just make the square until I run out of yarn and then I'll switch to another color 
and do some and then, you know, do another one. And as the blanket gets bigger, the uh, bands of color change size. Sometimes I'll do two of them or I'll count the bands and try to make them even. But I basically just go round and round in squares the whole time. And that keeps me from having to count. And um, all I have to do is just make a corner, you know, four times a, a row. And so I can do it almost passively, which makes it a great hobby because I don't have to think about it too much. And if I get real technical with patterns on crochet, I, it, I just <laughs> lose it and wind up with a big mess. And I, I can't keep track of all the uh, different stitches and stuff. So I found a way that I can really enjoy crochet and be very productive at it. And it looks pleasing to me, in my opinion. I like my kind of square blanket. Well, there's not one out right now. There's usually one around. But it, I just frame the square with different colors, and that's how I make blankets. But that's the way all of my blankets are. Sometimes I'll do something different, like put a little tassel on the corner or put someone's initial on it or something like that. But And I can do a little frilly edge. You know, I can do like uh, the ruffled edge along I can do that too so sometimes I'll do that but they're all basically the same design real simple real basic but uh, it allows me to make blankets for my friends and I'm looking forward to this one because I'm a particular fan of this shade of uh, like harvest gold I don't know what they're calling this shade let's see the color name is sun gold Okay, they're calling this sun gold. Um, but this looks really retro to me, and I love making blankets that look like great granny made them, you know, like back in the 70s, like with those colors that were available then. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, I love that, that harvest gold that's so pretty. And then I saw this for an accent. I just couldn't resist. And I knew I wanted to do something in blue, and I was thinking, you know an ombre blue or a variegated blue or something, but that harvest gold just caught my eye, so I had to go with that. We had a really good day today. Traffic wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And I drove over there, and he drove all the rest of the day. And it was nice. We had a, we had a nice day. On the way home, we had finally found the uh, bolts that fit Virginia's bed. And so we stopped there on the way home and he assembled the bed for her. And she had thought that it was a queen size bed, but actually it was a full size bed. So uh, that's good to know before she invested in a new box springs and mattress. And then, yeah, we had uh, got a, a puzzle for his cousin and we stopped by and gave it to him. And it was the coolest puzzle that I ever saw. It was like, um, Okay, the people that are from The Office, you know, the American version of The Office, all the cast and crew recreated the Surratt painting. It's called An Afternoon at the Island of something that starts with a G. I can't remember. But, it, you know, if you want to see it, if you want to, you can Google it, An Afternoon at the Island by Surratt, and you'll get it. But it was the same setup, you know how they do. Uh, all the people were standing in exactly the same places as the people in the painting. And uh, it was really cool. It was a really funny, uh, kind of classy, funny take on the office. And uh, so we stopped by. He, he's been doing a lot of puzzles lately. So we saw that one and couldn't resist while we were at the craft store. Uh, drop that off and come back home here to, um, I think the cats had been running amok. Um, I can sometimes kind of tell when they've been running amok because they're all guilty looking. <laughs> it's like, I've been in the sink and I've been on the counter, but I'm not going to let you know. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I would chat with you guys a few minutes, catch you up on what we were doing and um, show you what we got at town today. And uh, tell you about my glasses. So I'm real excited about my new reading glasses and uh, I'll be getting those. They said in about two weeks, it might be sooner, 
but expect about two weeks so I'll go over there and pick those up and I'll be sure to show them to you I'm very much looking forward to it and so I guess that's it for now so I appreciate you guys joining me for my little crafty haul and a little chit chat and coffee after I got back from town mm. what would we do without coffee thanks for joining me you guys until next time y'all be sweet